on to the next session, which is NetProv for Social Good with Mark Marino and Rob Wittig, who are both here. Welcome, Mark and Rob. I turn over to you. Thank hey, you. Thank you very much. The history of elated letters with the corpses of unplayable projects. Do I recognize that song? What What's that? Do oh, I it's that old. It, oh, I was just singing that old folk song, you know, the the history of Elit is littered with the corpses of the fallen bodies of unplayable projects on uh, proprietary platforms. You know, you know, you yeah, ever hear that one? That's really sad. I have a. Version, yeah, it's one of my, a, one of my it's like yeah, it's kind of a dirge. Yeah, but yeah, I like I have it. A version from the early 70s, like a small Irish group with just a violin. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Right, but the violin you can't you can't hear that recording anymore, can you? No. Sad. <laughs> what are we talking about today, Rob? <laughs> we are doing Netprov. Uh, we're going to do Netprov together, uh, all of us, and we'll talk in a second about what Netprov is. If uh, you're not familiar with the term, it gives some examples. But we're thinking in particular. I would say the overriding theme of today's uh get together uh a collaborative burst of creativity where we're going to encourage everybody to jump in and play uh is medicine for social ills and thinking of art as uh having a therapeutic goal as that being one of the ways to frame and think about art but uh let's uh jump in um one of the things that we like to do is um take advantage of thing platforms like uh whatever the available platform is and one of the definitions of netprov is that we do things in available media so here we are in zoom um, so I, just a couple of quick things that I would love to do. Let's uh, for a minute, I'll get out of uh, my watch. Let's for one minute reenact and everybody who's invited to turn your cameras on if you want to and look to a gallery view. Let's reenact one of my favorite, favorite moments of the Zoom era, which is the awkwardness at the beginning of a Zoom. So just we all we're all here. We just pretend like we don't know each other. And we're, everybody's a little shy. We might. No, he said we're going to start. Yes. He said, he said, you guys turn it down. He's starting. A microphone. You guys knew Wait. I had this presentation. You knew I had it. No mushrooms. No, you're not mine. sharing okay, no your mushrooms. screen here. You, you, you got to share the screen. It's down on the bottom. There's a green light. And all, everyone's yeah, still yeah, on yeah. mute. I, you're, you something happening phone oh oh, oh you're frozen again okay great excellent 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 but is just... this bio 101 am i in the right classroom <laughs> no. just uh uh just pick up your uh, exam on the way in so one of th that is uh, in the sense of, of a few things to take away uh, as NetProv tips and tricks from the, that Mark and I have learned from over the years. That's one. Anytime you're in new media, a new medium to you, just observe those moments where things are kind of breaking down. Be aware of them, and they are they can be the roots of art projects. Um, but let's let's do a quick uh, piece of writing and. Uh, and if it's okay with, with you, Mark, uh, I might jump in fairly soon to doing the slideshow, but we could, uh, I'd like to ask people to do a little bit of writing in chat. I love the fact that people are, are anywhere and everywhere when they're on Zoom. Um, I'd like to ask everyone to give just a quick report maybe on the weather or uh, maybe on kind of, well, let's do this. Let's, let's do social climate, however you want to define that. It's like the last gathering of friends you were at or the last class. What's the social climate of some place that you are pretending to be? So it's not where you really are, but someplace pretend to be somewhere and give us a quick report on what you would consider to be the social climate and just throw that into chat. 
and we'll see what begins to develop there. Uh, and then, Mark, should I just go ahead and uh, do a quick? Yeah, you should go go ahead. They they're Lyle was telling me that she wants to see more slides at the conference. Gotcha. She wants okay. just <laughs> she wants these presentations, these workshops, the interactive ones, to be nonstop slides. So okay. Let's get started as will, planned. Let's get started. I made a meme. Don't make me share my meme. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to accommodate. <clears throat> so here we are. So NetProv. One <laughs> definition. But essentially, I always think of NetProv as coming out of the long, long tradition in uh, the European tradition of the Comedia dell'arte, the unbroken chain of uh, comedy and satire that goes all the way back to ancient Greece with characters that have stayed remarkably the same over the years who put a mask on and uh, imitate uh, the vagaries of power. Um, so that's another definition of NetProv. Could call it that. Uh, the version that I settled on most recently is uh, that or network uh, networked improvised literature. What's an example of it? Well, when uh, Vladimir Putin annexed portions of the Ukraine, uh, a someone on Twitter in uh, Poland just said, well, we're going to annex Kaliningrad, which is a little Russian enclave that's in the middle of Poland on the coast. Uh, and they renamed it Kralovets, and they pretended that they had annexed it, and it was now part of Czechia. Well, this idea took off. This whole wonderful website developed out of it, and it got thousands and thousands of tweets. And um, Czech and Polish politicians began to refer to it. So it began, it, what started as a joke became a kind of creative experiment. And if you uh, look carefully on the slide here, you see that Poland and the Ukraine name are, are border, uh, Little Mordor and Mordor there, just on this very straight faced um, uh, website. That's uh, Neprov. How many people have heard of? Um, Martin Scorsese's very early gangster film, Goncharov. Okay, how many hands up if people have heard about it? Okay, well, this does not exist. Uh, it was invented again, and a whole culture is built around it. That's Neprov. And so Neprov is not something that Mark and I invented, or it's not a brand name, but it's a scholarly uh, label for things that lots of people are doing and that uh, quite uh, possibly you do uh, yourself with your friends. So, um, Scorsese and uh, Scorsese himself acknowledges having made the imaginary film go and shut up. So there's dabloons on TikTok. That's another example. Lots of sort of current examples. Where Neprov uh, lies is in this interspace between these fields and even more fields. But it it draws in practice from games, theater, social media, and the people who play Neprov consistently. Uh, a group, a certain international group that we refer to as the NetProv featured players. Uh, and then we, we call sort of everybody who plays a NetProv a player. And we thought long and hard about, are they writers? Are they, you know, designers? What are they? We've decided to call them players, but come from these different backgrounds. And the different backgrounds come with wonderful different traditions super interdisciplinary. Some of the conversation earlier today in the session about education and the desperate need for sort of allowing interdisciplinary activity. This is a perfect example because any of these fields provide backgrounds. If you want to know more about NetProv, uh, here's my plug, brand new book, uh, free open access from Amherst College Press. Uh, lots of activities for teachers. Uh, there's a link if you want to get to it quickly. But so the kinds of things that we've done to use this form uh, that we discovered uh, and began to love online for social good uh, include things like one week no tech, which is uh, something it's replicable. It's great for, again, for groups of students. So the idea of one week no tech is very simple. You pretend to go for a week without technology, and then you complain about it uh, 
extravagantly in your social medium of choice. So we did it twice in Twitter in the old days of Twitter, and we complained about how hard it was to be without our phones. And we uh, kind of uh, uh, virtue signaled about being out in the woods away from their our phones. So here's pictures of people documenting uh, not using technology. Another project that we did that I just thought had a lot of uh, wonderful elements uh, of promise for kind of psychological healing or psychological reflection was memories, which posits a essentially a kind of a Facebook or Instagram type service where people have a lot of their family uh, images and then the images all disappear and it's described memories is a sport a support group for those who lost their online social scrapbooks in the memories incorporated server fire and bankruptcy so it's just a reminder that they co-own those pictures and they can disappear at any time so what we did was we had people recreate family images of family and friends using household objects so this is a honeymoon picture from hawaii um at the edge of a beautiful pool where the couple are uh, embracing there uh, in front of, and that's a bigger, a picture of them. You can see them here in the middle up against the volcano in the background. And it just produced wonderful things. So um, we took advantage of the popularity of the word game Wordle, and we made a version of it called Grumple, kind of addressing uh, the the uh, strife, I would say, it's strife, division, anger, uh, the acceptability of grumpiness in public discourse, and made a version of a word game that doesn't really work right. And so the point of it was not the game, the point of it was the Reddit group where people tried to figure out what was wrong with the game and what, uh, uh, why it is misbehaving. And Theories included that the game was a way for uh, dead people to uh, send messages to their living uh, relatives and that kind of thing. So, again, very uh, a way of a humorous way of kind of turning the head on on uh, situations. This was a wonderful one where we asked everybody to pretend to be um, really bad influencers and bad in the sense that they gave. Uh, relationship advice people would come you could either play a person with a troubled relationship or and an influencer you play one of each so that as a person with a troubled relationship you ask a relationship question of this influencer and then the influencers give really bad advice that's intended to only make things look good for the camera uh, they don't care about how they don't care what the relationship is really like they just want to uh um, do that. Mark, did you want to, and any of these, Mark, if you want to jump in and say, say something more, that's, that would, that would be great. But this is one where I really thought, where we, for me, we really started to think about this as uh, medicine. So like, people are, you know, being, feeling, are, comp are, are making themselves miserable through comparison, comparison, comparing themselves to other people on social media, I don't have as good a relationship, I don't have as good a vacation, I don't have as good a job. Uh, and by exaggerating that to kind of call that into question uh, through, through satire. Um, we developed a Sisyphean fitness app where you never quite could reach your goals. Um, and we invented for it a, a, the activity of backstepping. And I, just so that everybody knows, I, I assume everybody knows this, but it's much healthier to walk backwards than it is to walk forward. So there's this whole community of uh, backstepping. And again, this was a, a silly way to start, but what this can, became was a meditation on body image, on um, perfectionism, on uh, fitness, uh, the ways in which uh, apps of all kinds, it was actually inspired by a meditation app that uh, seemingly, seemingly would taunt me if I missed a day of meditation. It's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be a helpful, like, what is, and then I realized, oh, well, everything is all, that's how apps developers are thinking, is like you want to essentially kind of encourage slash shame people into doing so. So this is a meditation on that motive, I guess, you know, motivation, body image, a lot of issues. So just as a reminder, whenever I, I 
think, talk about NetProv or think we think about NetProv just to remind people how um, similar this era is to the early eras of literature, the sort of forgotten beginnings. And I always use this as kind of my anchor. This is the title page of the original edition of what is considered to be one of the first English language novels, uh, the, uh, which goes by the, uh, usually by the mistaken uh, short title of just Robinson Crusoe. And I love this big, long title. And the reason I love it is, again, early literature works often have long explanatory titles that kind of you have to sort of explain what it is <laughs> that you're doing. But the key thing is that um, Life and Adventures uh, of Robinson Crusoe, Mariner, written by himself. And just as a reminder that Daniel Defoe, who we now know to be the author of this, went to his grave insisting that Robinson Crusoe was written by a real Robinson Crusoe because he didn't believe anybody would be interested in a fake story. So it's just a reminder how um, fiction is negotiated. Uh, fictions and fictional strategies are always have to be negotiated over the course of decades at their outset. And then obviously just a reminder that the, the Brontes never got to publish under their own name. Jane, Jane Austen never got to publish under her own name. So my background in this kind of work is crowdsourced novels that this was the novel of Invisible Seattle. And yes, that's me rocking the bad 70s mustache uh, with my literary workers outfit. And we interviewed people, we put diaries in the public library in Seattle, and we encouraged, uh, coaxed, uh, uh, invited the citizens of Seattle to write a great novel about themselves. Because there, we said, there's no great novel of Seattle. Um, let's have Seattle write it. So we put it together on word processors, essentially, in this giant sculptural computer called Scheherazade II. Uh, people contributed, people edited on the walls. Uh, it was a mystery story. So here are the clues in the little vitrines out in the room. And we had a tremendous amount of fun for three sleepless days, uh, putting together a first draft of the novel. For anybody who knows the American novelist Ken Kesey, that's Ken Kesey contributing to the novel and uh, he I, I know which words which line is his but I'm sworn to secrecy I'll never tell. Um, so we realized in this process that collaborative writing was not only fun for us we've been doing writing experience experiments this group called Invisible Seattle but it was fun for everybody and it was really a fun thing to invite people to come and write and people were uh, as I still just know deep in my bones, people are more creative than they think. Uh, and it is a pleasure. And all those of, you, those of you who teach creative writing and work with students or teach, do creative projects with sort of non-creative majors, know the joy of, of reminding people that yes, you all have that in you and it's really fun. So that produced uh, a, a version of that book and that whole period of experimentation was, is documented in this book called Invisible Rendezvous. So, but just a few more examples uh, to get us thinking, because I want us to be, we're going to be coming up to, Mark and I are going to um, sort of su support you as we come up as a group with some ideas for net prompts. But this was one called All Time High. This was an idea by Claire Donato and J.J. Johnson, uh, po poet Claire Donato, uh, architect J.J. Johnson, who said, let's all um, make a separate Twitter account as our high school selves. And let's all go to high school together for a month in Twitter and see what happens. And the thing that I love about that is generally when you, um, it has the perfect profile of a NetProv concept, I think. Generally, when you explain that idea to people, they smile. And then after a few seconds, their faces drop when they start to remember what it really was like to be in high school. Mm -hmm. And that was um, the, the, pleasure of this here's here's a real life claire donato uh present day claire donato interacting with her uh high school self and that's a very interesting moment too um uh, when people began to do that she was not not the only one who did that and this project was um organized around four uh traumatic i mean uh, major moments of american high school experience the the big game, the big dance, uh, the graduation, and the, the talent show. But 
Mark had suggested broadening the possibilities for a narrative. So it's not only everyone w would get to play their own high school self, but you'd get to play anybody from history as a high schooler. So there was a high school Dorothy Parker, there was a high school Sappho that uh, Claire Donato played. Um, a guy named Michael Russo that we had never met yet played uh, Johnny Depp as the cop who infiltrates a high school and using that, and then played a series of Johnny Depp's with the avatar changing from Johnny Depp movie. And his, the character, it wasn't really Johnny Depp, it was a series of characters that Johnny Depp had played. Again, you could write a whole paper just on that. That is such an interesting moment of, of culture. Um, but the, the thing that I just wanna say here, and you know, Claire picked this picture of her young, self as, for the avatar here this was really for many of the people who played played this game um a kind of psychologically deep uh, moment at uh, when you know give yourself some time to play with yourself now and your high school self what would you say to your high school self what does your high school self say to you uh, what if you go to, you know, high school aged Walt Whitman for advice or, uh, you know, uh, high school aged Jane Austen for, for to, to share writing, like, how does that work? And just as a quick example, from my point of view, I did something kind of flippantly, as I realized later, I did, I developed a character, I went to a little small town high school in California where the pictures there were, you know, a hundred plus years of pictures of the seniors was all, were all up in the walls and gave me the sense of the history of that place. So I invented a character who was uh, turning 18 right on the edge of the American involvement in World War II. And in my mind, it's like, oh, this kid's gonna graduate from high school and he's gonna go off to World War II. Um, and I, my present day character started uh, hanging out with him. Then my high school character became friends with this kid. And it became clearer and clearer in my mind that he was not going to make it back from Europe uh, at the end of World War II. And I got really sad and I really got attached to him. And there was uh, some sweet sort of goodbyes where the characters don't know that it's their last goodbye and things like that. And, and again, we, we say this um, with a smile, but with a loving smile that... Uh, People often report to us that at the end of a Neprov, they're crying at some point because they're crying to say goodbye to their character or they've had the, their characters had these real time social media relationships with these other characters that are very meaningful to them. So this is that's an indication of what potential ways in a more targeted way that Neprov could be used for social good in a kind of psychological sense or in a kind of a healing a healing sense and the and again I think the key one of the keys real keys that we found is that by starting silly and humorous it it, it let it lets everybody open up and people can stay there they can stay at that comfort zone but they people often want to go deeper so um this was a project that was inspired in part by uh, a comment from one of my students uh, and then a wonderful post on Facebook by Mark Marino, where he said, well, I'm back to work in the, in the like farms at uh, Facebook, and I'm, you know, working for Zuckerberg and liking things, because as we became aware of like what the actual uh, financial model of Facebook was, where liking, liking produced uh, income. And so we imagined um, that the company makes a, a rah-rah campaign about how much free work you're doing for them and how you're how happy you are about it called I work for the web and then all of a sudden that movement gets turned around to be a labor movement uh, and people start to think about striking and not liking things and doing uh, various things so this is some uh, piece that was done by um, uh, Joellen Rock's character Vanna Everbush and just showing that it's not just writing, but there's plenty of opportunity for visual um, things. This is Talon Mehmet's wonderful uh, union poster. Uh, and then his little character here, Link Din. I love it. So Link Din was, his, was the union leader for the I Work for the Web thing. So again, 
as a teaching tool and as just a way for the featured players of all ages and all you know different professions around the world to kind of think together about what is it what are we doing and what is it is it to be making money for other people by our preferences um and we the campaign was like if you did the thumbs up that meant that you were voting for the union and then you know some people voted voted uh down and uh, again, Joellen Rock made this wonderful kind of Russian style poster, thumbs up. And the company turned it upside down and made it a, uh, as, as played, the company has played in part by Mark, um, turned that upside down. And we were, so we were able to kind of act out a union movement. And, and I don't know, for my students and for some, again, just some people out there, it was like they had not really thought through what a union is really and why one would do it and what a what unions are for so that was a way to uh, plant some ideas so this is the walkout where people are walking out with their fingertips uh, and and the waffler one of our favorite characters uh, the waffler who couldn't quite decide whether they were for the union or not for the union and they walked out on a on a waffle by the end um airbnb which is the idea that uh, you know, again, hands up, how many people have moments in their day where they're really bored and they're just, they, they kind of, you know, nothing's really going on in, in, in your life or you're, you know, on a train or something like that. Well, what if you could rent out that time to other people? So you rent out your life. And so we invented, modeled on Airbnb. We, we uh, came up with this idea, um, you know, if you ache to be anywhere but here, welcome to Airbnb, a new experience in life swapping. When you feel like checking out of your own life, check into somebody else's. Why not turn your downtime into a timeshare? Um, so it's the Airbnb is the original and still the best online life swapping community. So it's a it's a kind of speculative fiction premise that people get to play with. And people just loved it. People, it's all kinds of things. Um, one of my favorite ones was somebody said, um, I have a boyfriend, I, he just, we're not really getting along, but he's super handsome. And I, I really, um, I need someone to come into my life and break up with him for me. And uh, so somebody reported like you do on Airbnb, you do a review. So somebody went to this uh, person's life and they reported back, man, you are not kidding. He is really super cute. Uh, I wanted to break up with them, but we wound up uh, cuddling on the couch by the end. So just again ways as fiction does ways of working out issues so you know somebody wanting someone to go visit with their parents uh somebody wants to somebody else to take their shakespeare test for them um that kind of thing um let's see where how are we doing on time mark i could go on but i probably shouldn't do we want to jump into hands-on or you want to see a couple more? yeah i think i think we're 30 minutes over when we were going to go into breakout rooms okay gotcha um, so we probably should transition to, to breakout rooms. Um, so, so breakout rooms. So I, I apologize to anybody who's not really at the conference and is really, you know, washing their dog or taking a bath. Um, but we're going to put you in the breakout rooms. And, um, and in those breakout rooms, we are going to have you uh, fill out some slides that we can later put on the Miro board. And those slides ask you as a group to, to figure out, to choose a social issue or an issue where you think, and social issue broadly, it could be something that affects uh, the globe, like climate change, or it could be something that more narrow um, that affects, uh, you know, interpersonal relationships. But that we, presumably that's also global, right? On some level, on, on every level. Um, and then you'll come up with like a little uh, premise or a prompt, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of game that will be played. Um, I, actually, you know, I, I have premise and prompt together, but actually, really premise is sort of separate, and the and the game itself is kind of a prompt. Um, and also, again, just to answer Monique's point, you know, if you're if you're not really there in the breakout room it, it's okay we're gonna make we're gonna make these relatively big so it'll be able to sustain some some people who aren't really really here um and then the question is how does it heal um you know how do you see this game providing some healing and then if you could think of a platform it would be good to play this on then that's great too um 
and Rob and I will be circulating through the rooms and we'll we'll sort of facilitate this making and yeah, we'll do but... this for I think looks like we set aside 15 minutes for this little activity uh that seems like that keeps us on schedule I, sorry yeah. would you want to add Rob no uh, yeah I was just gonna say yeah that's that that's the principle it's like what's the what's the pain point and what's what is the medicine what's a possible medicine for it yeah great great okay so i'm creating these rooms um and again uh we'll be joining them as well um and i recommend that you begin by everybody just really quickly introducing themselves because people might not know each other um so okay so i'm creating these rooms right now and i just created them randomly and now i'm going to open all the rooms And then Rob, do you want to start out in one and I'll start in another? Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know. How about, uh, how about if you go to room one? Okay, I will. Uh, and, and then I, I can will go, you as well. Uh, I'll, yeah, sure. And I'll, I'll go to room two. Oops, I accidentally uh, exited. Uh, okay, I can assign you somewhere. Wait, you exited. Yeah, I, I hit the wrong thing when I I was in room one, and then I I, th I think you're you're still um you're still there you're still assigned to it. I think you should still be able to join it. I think. Okay, let me see. Is there a way to do that? If you go to breakout rooms on your little ah aha, uh -huh. you should be able to join. And I, okay, so she's going to room two. I was just keeping an eye for which ones have fewer people. Yeah, I would... maybe, maybe I should, maybe I should go to group three. You think? No, uh, you go to room two. I'll go to, I'll go to room three. Okay. Okay. That was enough time. Come on back. Okay, I'm not going to force them to come back. Have you ever had a group not come back before on Zoom? I have. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been teaching. I don't have all oh, the teaching experience. You can teach me, Lyle. I'll be in your <laughs> class. <laughs> Okay, and welcome, David. I'm sorry you missed out on the antics in those breakout rooms. I'm sure you're you're sh shaken by it. You're just broken up, um, and you're uh, muted. I'm. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm on the west coast. I'm also on the west coast. Wait, oh, the west coast of what? I should ask. What? The uh, west coast of what? Oregon. Of Oregon. Okay, and I'm I'm below you in the west coast of um, California. Ah. Uh yeah uh, great well nice to meet a fellow west coaster <laughs> um, and if these people take any longer i'm gonna i'm gonna shut them down mm. okay welcome back welcome back folks we get settled in we only went we only rustled through your bags you left in the room a little bit just to see see if there's any food in there really that's all i'm looking for i get a little hungry while i'm teaching uh Okay, I am going to close all rooms. Time to bring those folks back a little force, a little more forcefully. You know you could do that. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you have to. Believe me. <laughs> Loiterers. Yeah, exactly. They're having too much fun in their break up. Time to, to give them some misery. <laughs> 
Emmy. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And there's my co-host, Rob. Welcome back. So, Rob, it looks like people have been uh, have been doing what uh, what they should, and we can hear present. So, the next thing I believe we plan to do is to hear presentations from all of the groups. Um, and uh, I guess we'll, we'll just go around in order. And so, so our, our loose idea was we would, we would hear these pitches and then, then hopefully we could, we could try out at least, at least one of these uh, net probs. Okay, all right, so let's go with group number one. I, I don't know if you guys have a speaker or not. Although I, I see you don't have any notes on your slides, which makes me feel like I failed to share the slides with your room. Are we, are we in group number one? You're group number one, yeah. All oh, right, okay. Our, our uh, idea is um, because... Uh, anyway, the, the idea is that... Um, um, when people ride, uh, when it started with electric scooters, when people ride electric scooters, um, because electric scooters are, are bio-powered, um, they actually drain the rider of energy. And when you're drained of energy, you're unable to speak. And then this um, various other electronic devices are also uh, became bio-powered. So if you have your, uh, mobile phone um, while you're, you're holding it, it will actually drain your power and you will be unable to speak until you, you put it down. The problem is that after some time, you are, you're actually drained entirely of, of power and there's only one way to recharge yourself and that's through dancing. Um, but it, it isn't just any kind of dancing, it has to be a, a, rhythm, a, a changing and dynamic rhythmical movement, not a regular movement. And often, often people get that part wrong. And I think exactly yes, this kind of and then slow and then quick again. And I chip in if, I, if there was anything that I missed out there. Great. Well, I'll go through the prompts on the slides really quickly. So, so the social issue. Well, I'm not going to social issue yet because that's kind of like the the thing behind it. But so, so gameplay. I've got that uh, you get the, these scooters, this transportation things, they, they drain, or that's the premise, they drain, drain people, I mean, make sure, see if I miss anything. And then you power yourself back up communally or individually with dancing and dancing has a, a kind of physical form. It sounds, looks like it's a lot of hand, hand dancing, it looks like, which I'm familiar with. And, um, and, and would a good platform for this be something like a Zoom? Is Zoom a good platform or some sort of video platform like TikTok? Yeah, something it's it's basically kind of people sharing information about it again. Isn't that is that our sense in, in group one? That it's uh we're sort of scholars. There's the, the new wave of bioelectricity items, everybody loves them, but then they, then this problem starts to surface with them and we're trying to figure out what the solution is. That's a, that sounds good. I, I think TikTok would be a great platform for this because TikTok is already has so much dance built into it, right? Uh, and then you could do like micro perform, you know, cause you can have like a 15 second video. You can have like the lead up people doing the performances of like, oh, I just got back from a scooter ride, uh, you know, like whatever, like you could perform that for a little while before you collectively come up with uh, the dance solution. That's awesome. So. Um, so what what would you your group call the social issue that you're addressing? Like I can see it, but I, it'd be great to hear from you all. Well, I suppose to some extent it's um, it's a, a power saving. Oh, Margot, who is actually mute in our group. What, what did it say? I, I, it was too small on my screen. It said being mute, mute because Margot is actually. She's unable to un, unmute. So that was part of our inspiration. 
Oh, I see. Got it. So, 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 but Christine, you were saying? Um, it, well, it, it might be a way of um, saving, uh, saving energy, energy saving, uh, in, but it has a detrimental effect on the human. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know about that. It, it seems to me from the outside that the thing that you could also be addressing in this piece is the, just the drainingness of, of society, like what we're, what we're asking of our, like there are people here at this conference that are still like trying to like teach and raise their families and whatever else at the same time that they're attending this conference. And we love to think that we can do all of the, like, oh yes, and yes, more and more and more. I can do this while I do this. I can, you know, all the, it, the easy critiques of like the labor saving devices that give you more time to, to use more labor saving devices to use more labors at the same time, right? The sort of everything all at once, the, the way that we used to uh, schedule Zoom meetings back to back, because of course you don't need to walk between them. Who needs to use the bathroom, right? That sort of thing, yeah. So I, so I love that is addressing that. So a question it, I have for you guys, oh, go ahead, Rob. I was just gonna say, you might say, and again, Check me if I'm wrong about this uh, group one, but it, it's it's essentially it might be using electrical energy as a metaphor for mental energy or for attention. Yeah, that that that's awesome. Um, Margo, did you have anything you want to add? Because I saw you were able to unmute yourself at some point. So, oh, even when it's unmuted, we can't hear you. That's it's because not. she's on an e-scooter. <laughs> oh, nice. This is performative. I get it. I get it. Okay, well, feel free to type things, too, in the chat, too, that people can read aloud. That might be another way to get into the recording. Okay, so let me ask you the golden question, which is, so you guys quickly chose chose dancing. How do you see that as healing the this this problem? Because it's an it's a, an energizing um, cultural activity. Um, it gives joy, and it puts the body in the center of a life where machines are everywhere. And I'm gonna type some of this up. So it gives joy, energizing, yeah, super powerful. And then, then let's not miss this from Margo who writes, it's a form of expression that is maybe beyond technologies and do not require, this is, this is the mic drop moment, a microphone. Nice, nice. Okay, well, well great. Thank you, uh, group one. And I hope we'll give snaps all around and I hope, hope we're able to play this momentarily. Uh, um, I hope I'm not like pulling the curtain back too quickly, but the the thing that we're doing with these snaps, the thing that I'm sure Rob was doing in your session, the thing that you're all doing right now, um, this kind we we call it kind of like a, a form of player care, and with netprovs, of course you all do this as teachers in your classrooms. You hopefully you do it with other humans all of the time, but often Rob and I will assign someone to the job of player care, and their job is like. Some of it's just like reading aloud stuff that strikes you as funny or modeling what that looks like, giving props. I just got done participating in this um, board game conference called Protospiel. And they, they, they had this thing called a shout out Palooza on their Discord, where they made a game out of like getting people to like, you know, give other people shout outs. And, and again, so like part of a lot of the work that Rob and I do early on with our Neprovs is is real you know really celebrating the contributions of 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 everybody and in and, and genuinely of course when something cracks you up do you read it aloud and you you make sure that people feel those contributions being seen and, and being heard because they really are wonderful and to me that's worth so much more than you know well that that's it like that's the the building community part of this is what it's all about okay so let's go group two you all have strange faces um let's hear about your project I mean, I have a very strange face, Mark, but is is that what you meant? <laughs> did we lose I mean, a designated the, speaker? I think we did. There seemed to be some there seemed to be some feline um, faces in the in the room. Uh oh. Uh we've our designated speaker 
uh, just left our chat because, you know, they had other cat business to do. <laughs> we are actually the kitten protection movement and we are going to take back the internet. There will be no more memes of cats. There will, the only pictures of cats there will ever be on the internet are the straight ones, the beautiful ones. Nothing funny about us without us. That's just it. Yes, and we're taking over this Zoom place right now. So, do you want to join us or fight us? Okay, okay. Well, now, now let me let you now, now in or out of character. What, what? Give us the the premise for for this one. Sure. We were actually first talking about climate change, and then we thought about the biases of climate change and how these might not be recognized um, in some universities that won't be named. They're funded by oil. So the students who go there may not understand that. Now we, we have our person back. <laughs> and so then we thought, well, what are our biases? How can we really show these biases within applications? Um, and then we thought, all right, well, we thought about some people that won't be named ahem, Middle East, ahem, women, Thought, no, that might be a little bit too close to home. So we said, all right, let's just be fun with this and have it so that the internet bias is about cats because, you know, cats are unfairly portrayed in most internet situations. And then we thought, oh, how could we play this game? Well, we could do prompts in a mid journey and insist that no cat ever be shown in a mid-journey prompt ever again or in that database because, you know, it's biased. Um, or we could then do something more easy, which is play this in Zoom with the filters. And at this point, we can easily tell who's with us and who is without us, you know, against us by the use of the filters, man. All right, very, very good. And so, um... So we got a platform, we got a premise. Um, so, so you play this game over over Zoom, perhaps, uh, or 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 also it sounds like it could be played. I think we talked about it being played on a server that has Midjourney installed in it. Um, and then uh, there was a little bit of talk of um, what if you join Midjourney pictures, but then also pictures that people make that are obviously like just a photograph of themselves in cat makeup. You know, so again, just totally do the the low tech version of this, right? Uh, and then the musical cats came up at some point as well. Um, what what is this? What is this heel? Or no, wait, wait, what what, what 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 problem does it address? I guess you guys hit it that it's sort of like censorship and things like that. It's it's really targeting, right? Yeah, and our strategy is pretty much the argumentum ad absurdum. So when you're able to take be taken out of yourself and see this type of bias as cats, you'd be able to see it as the white men that show up as the scientists or the women that we were talking about earlier. And then you can see it in other areas. So it's a consciousness raising. Yeah. So, so you're, ta you're tackling this, this idea of censorship, right? So this is the, this is like the the women in, in Iran, right? This is like who are out there in the streets pr protesting, right? There, there, there's a physical manifestation of it. Here it's the, the cat faces. And then, but can I ask you a question? Because Annie s said this word joy. And to me, there's something joyful about seeing all of your faces with these cat filters on. Um, can anybody talk about the affective experience of, of this, of just like wearing the cat filter? <laughs> Or, or how that plays into the healing, I guess. How does the dressing up as cats play into the healing? Siobhan, you, you seem like you got something. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that gets that that is really joyful and playful about this is that, you know, sort of cats and cat memes tend to be almost consistently, you know, sort of in the strata of super playful and just like the satisfaction of a scroll of Instagram sort of videos. Well, also kind of paradoxically, really then driving exactly what we were first concerned about, which is kind of 
climate crisis and, you know, sort of computational processes and the fact that we'd be, con con you know, sort of basically contributing to this. So there's that tension between the joy and the play and delight. And I think what Clay Shirky said years ago that like lol cats are the gateway to the internet, to making on the internet. Um, but also who doesn't love kittens, right? So that kind of that tension in there for everyone who's not allergic to cats. Um, and it really does, thank you, it really does kind of break up the uh, the the conventions of the meeting. Like at, as we were saying in our group, make sure that you hit or you don't hit apply to all future meetings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> in your following admin meeting this afternoon with this first. Exactly. So we're, we're aiming yeah. to disrupt this one and, and disrupt and provide like a social critique, uh, you know, for this particular time period. But yeah, I don't know if I want to disrupt um, a department meeting uh, with my cat face. So. <laughs> all right. All right very, very, very good. Yeah. So I, I turned on my my avatar that I I saw most I saw originally with uh, Joel and Rock dem demoed this for me. Um, Okay, great. All right, so group number, that was great group number two and group number three, T tell us what you got. Um, are we group number three? I don't think we actually yeah. ever agreed on who the uh, talk was gonna be. So I'll I'll step forward. It's like herding um, cats. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it's so disturbing seeing you as a cat on screen. Um, so our idea was around the concept of AI taking over writing and art on the internet and not being able to distinguish between humans and AI. And our concept was for a uh, an idea where you hire an AI to post to social media for you but the AI are all actually humans that you're hiring instead. So the game is between people who play customers who start to suspect that there's not an actual AI running their social media and people who are playing people being AIs trying to pretend they're actually people. I love it. Okay, so uh, let me go through the list. Da, da, da. So so how how do you so how do you play exactly like how would you imagine like play playing out like what 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 does play look like in this game? So we thought there'd be a website which is the company itself that offers the AI services, and you can go on there and hire somebody to post as you online. Maybe on one social media platform, we were thinking either Discord or Twitter because you can use an actual bot on there. And as part of the game, there will actually be an AI who's posting, but nobody knows who that AI is. And part of it's trying to find out who. I love it. I love it. Okay. And then, um, so, so the, and it's, I think it's pretty clear, but the social issue that's being covered, you, you, were, you probably already mentioned it, but just to underscore that real quick. Um, the issue is, AI and its capacity to create art and whether you can discern between AI and humans. And, and, and we talked about a lot about like that anxiety that we feel that a lot of people are feeling towards their human exceptionalism. And someone, someone had a great, great point, Tegan, I think it may have been you, that yeah. it may be the defining characteristic of what makes us human. Yeah, the defining characteristic of what makes us human is actually our fragile egos. <laughs> and how we have to differentiate ourselves from all other creatures and computers as well. Let's hear. For, I think we had some creatures in the house that are going to give it some some cat snaps to that for sure. Um, and and then uh, one more thing: H how does this heal? How how would how would playing this game sort of heal or address that wound? I think the main idea about the healing was that it reveals that it might not be that scary to have AI be just as exceptional as humans. Um, and also maybe in another way that AI might be easier to spot than you think if the actual AI is spotted before the end of NetProv. I love it. I love it. It's like, like hit, I, I love hidden role games. I love them a little bit too much. I, I think my life is a hidden role game. Um, 
It's a big game of werewolf. The truth um, is that that's not a filter. That's actually you. <laughs> <laughs> the hidden role is revealed. Okay, so we have about 11 more minutes. And if I, and Rob, if I remember correctly, we were going to try to play at least one yeah. of them. I feel like we're already playing the second one. So should we try to also add on the first or the third? We might be able to squeeze in both if we did sure. them for like do you, a couple of minutes. Do you want to just do it in chat for simplicity? Yeah, sake? I think chat chat is exactly the one we should use. I, I think it's going to be easier to do three first for a few minutes. So let's see how well for the next few minutes in chat you can pretend that you are that there's an AI bot writing for you instead of you. So let's we're doing a little bit of uh, passing. Can we pass as AI bots? <laughs> D DVD's doing doing the robot dance, which I just need to underscore right there. Awesome. <laughs> that's a little crossover there christine with the i am a cat line we're, we're, we're merging net probs at this point there should be something rob where it's like every net prob all at once that's right I love how nice. the video of this is going to look. It's going to be <laughs> a lot of us looking and typing and giggling, and no one's going to know what's happening. That's right. I, lo I love it. R Rob, can you read? Can you read? Uh, can you read John's? Because your French is better than mine. You may have to scroll up a little bit. Okay. Ce n'est pas un chat. Un chat, un chat. Although it does remind me of, of us being in, uh, I forget which conference, and, and Alan did the classic, all cats should be shot, the French pun. Wow. <laughs> shot, shot. Unmeow. Oh, I love unmeow. <laughs> <laughs> DVD's trying to connect to, to my server. Good luck. I told people in my group that my away message was going to be that my my server is unaccessible from now on. Like answer Margo's, I, Margo's, I Margo this. has, I, I can help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I got one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you want to purchase additional cat personalities to improve your experience? Click here. There we go. That's how how that sums it up. Mark going old school clippy. <laughs> I'm pleased with charging up another way. I do not understand. Repeat that cap. Cat up my batteries cannot help net prov felicitations. Help primate ser serves participants loading up. I, Alan, you are, that is officially a bot writing for Alan. I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> Too good. AI is going to have a conference where they're like, look at how they represent us. Sorry. That's not a representation joke. It's an AI boat joke. I don't think I can respond to that. Excellent. Hey, Siri, call Alexa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now we have to switch because we won't have time for the other one, which is now let's switch gears to our first 
well, this should be easy. You can continue playing that one. Actually, you can continue playing all of those in the chat. They can merge. And now, now I think it is time for some uh, performances of either exhaustion or recovery. Um, it's it, it, it's the last five minutes of our presentation before my next presentation. So I, I think I'll just enact exhaustion. You guys dance. Okay, I'm gonna. Let's see where 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 where's Annie? Okay, I'm gonna follow Annie. So Annie Annie could be could be seen as leading a dance. I That's see. That's right. She's the power station. Oh, I love it. I love that term. I love the power. That's excellent. Whereas Jocka has switched, has switched to pure animal form for a little while there. Yes, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't dance in, in that the true, that's why you have to be the hybrid. Yes. Oh, my shoulders, yes, oh, and slow shoulders. I love it, slow shoulders. We're recharging. <laughs> Andy's one of my favorite, like remind us that we have bodies online people, just. Yes. Absolutely. And I feel like Margot, Allen, Monique, and Jessica are doing perfect performances of exhaustion on the internet with their the cameras off, mic off. Like, what more do you need than that? That's right. Perfect. Oh, Shabon, Cat GPT. That is Cat golden. G Cat, Cat GPT. GPT. Bravo, Holy moly. Bravo. Oh, catchy PT. Oh, my goodness. There I'm, we go. We should quit there. We got David in on the act. He's recharging. He's recharging. Yeah, because, because, okay, so a question for the cat movement. It's like, should, should we be doing, should the proper memes be where humans imitate cats and that's funny to cats, right? So we curl up on the floor or we, Oh, that would be great. I could lick my paw. I, I'd love to see a hang in there that's like a human with, with cat right. makeup on hanging from a branch. Yeah, just exactly. like that would be great. Oh yeah, there's cat. We're doing cat. I think I think I'm trying to become feline. Sometimes my, my kids joke that I can become Hobbes from Calvin and Hobbes if I do this. Also Wolverine. That's more than what I want, but I don't quite can't quite do it just yet. <laughs> hit the gym a little bit more for that. Okay, one. okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. <clears throat> I have I have my AI out there exercising for me. Hmm. It's good plan. Plank GPT. No, that joke needs work. Cat GPI. <laughs> I love that typo. You call this? Wait, what was that supposed to be? Cat GPT. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Not to mention cat pi. <laughs> <laughs> that you know the investigator cat. Okay, wait, wait. People are probably tired. Rob, we got to seal this deal. They got to move on to the stuff. How are we going to okay. wrap this all up? Show me how we do it. How do we bring uh... all these things together? I think we all sort of gently do some seaweed with our hands as we're kind of uh, doing it. So oh, I hope I that thought that was have, like a an herbal medicine thing you were talking I about doing some you, seaweed. Doing some seaweed. I hope you've got some seaweed. Uh, some tips. I hope you do this with your friends. It's a parlor game, like a board game. Do it with your friends. Do it with uh, students. Uh, your students and uh, use these ideas. And if you if you we always love to consult and jam with people and play with people uh and good luck and we'll turn it into a single seaweed single seaweed bye bye everybody bye bye and then everybody can do some seaweed bye bye thank you uh, nice I don't, I don't nice a, play bye bye bad. it's legal seaweed's legal here okay all right great and thank you and back to back to lal <laughs> and dina who are, who are running this cat show here thank you everyone for participating you guys are the best Great spending time with you. I feel recharged. Yay. Thank you so much to Mark and Rob. That was 
super fun. I'm sorry I didn't get to pop into a room to uh, participate, but I discovered that you can't see what's going on in the main room and if anybody's joining or anything happening. So uh, um, I'm I'm glad to see the results and the lovely kitty faces and cat puns that emerged from it because um, that brings joy to my life. Um, so thank you all. That was amazing. Uh, I do believe that we actually have a break for a little bit at the moment, I believe. That's like, yes, yes, we do. We have 30 minutes of break. Uh, I know, it's amazing. So the Zoom will be here. Uh, feel free to use it if you like. It will be open. Um, if you want a breakout room, just let us know. I'm happy to give uh, people breakout rooms. Or you can go to the loo, uh, grab a snack, do some yoga, um, exercise, feed your dogs, uh, all, all sorts of things that uh, we may need to do. So we will be back in 30 minutes. Uh, for more of Mark Marino, uh, but accompanied this time with uh, John Murray uh, writing across the multi-metaverse. So we'll see you in 30 minutes. <laughs>